Hello, this is Nick Cap, and I am going to go through chapter number 24, looking at um, a typical mammalian immune system. And basically, um, biology and society have been going together for a long time, and uh, one of the big things that we've had recently is our technology of vaccination has really kind of failed us in terms of looking at HIV. And one of the things that we hopefully will get to do at the end of this uh, lecture is to talk a little bit about kind of why that happens. And so, again, there's a big push for everyone to find a cure for AIDS. And what we thought was simple at first turned out to be a little bit more complex. And hopefully we'll go into a little bit why. What I want to talk about today is the immune system, which is one of the ways that our body has of defending itself from outside foreign uh, invaders. Um, this invades us uh, from these things that we call pathogens, which are viruses and microorganisms, things that can get inside of our body and do us harm. Um, now, we have a number of defenses against them. We have our external body defenses. We have these innate defenses that we already have. And we have an adaptive defense is that once we get a disease once, we can actually um, um, recognize that de disease and pathogen and not get it into uh, the future. So again, our body's defenses are kind of mixed up into our external innate defenses, which include our skin and mucous membranes and all that. Our internal uh, defenses, which happen all the time to anything that we get, which are our phagocytic cells. We have these macrophage cells that eat uh, the pathogens, and then also we have our regular immune and inflammatory response. Along with that, we also have what we call an adaptive response, is just something that we learn. We develop these things that we call antibodies against pathogens that we have seen. We have the capability to produce antibodies against almost any single pathogen that's out there, but uh, again, it's a lot, and it takes our bodies some time to adapt or to learn how to fight off these antibodies. These are all part of something that we call the lymphatic system, and we'll cover that as well. And so again, this are going through real quick and looking at those guys here. Our external innate defense includes our outer layer of skin and um, kind of who, who you are. Um, to get um, within the bodies, in, in order for our immune system to really fight it, the pathogen needs to get inside of, of the body and then uh, what we have inside of our body. So once a pathogen is able to get into a hole or a mouth or on a mucous membrane, uh, et cetera, and gets into the body, then uh, we have another set of defenses that can help us um, uh, prevent that. And these include white blood cells and defensive uh, proteins. The white blood cells include uh, phagocytic cells that uh, can engulf and take up like the macrophage. It also includes these things called neutrophils, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. And then our defensive proteins include things that you may have heard of interferon, and we, we have actually purified interferon, and we use it to treat a number of drugs like hepatitis C, and also uh, a, a substance called complement, and we'll get a chance to talk about that in a, in a second. Uh, phagocytic cells engulf these foreign cells. Uh, neutral killer cells recognize virus-infected cells, and they get them, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. And so basically what's really kind of interesting is when a virus gets inside of a, a cell, the cell actually makes a last dying gasp and says, ah, you know, someone's in here. So like those old war movies where, you know, uh, uh, the lookout would yell as it gets shot or stabbed or something like that. And your cells kind of do the same thing. These cells release interferons uh, that when received by other cells, the healthy cell actually um, produces antiviral proteins and it doesn't get um, caught by that particular virus. And so if a cell is able to do that. The second thing we look at is basically what, a, a process that we call inflammation and swelling. And what goes on with inflammation and swelling is that when some bacteria get introduced into the body and the skin through a splinter or something else like that, we have um, many of our white blood cells go to that area and that area becomes swelling because actually there's more blood going to that area than it's coming out and it gets warm that prevents the bacteria from growing etc and eventually um, this area does get cleared off as it does uh, uh, come to heal so that's very important again damaged cells release blood uh, release um, will increase blood flow to that area but they prevent the blood flow from going out so that's one of the reasons why we see um, this inflammation. Dr Anti-inflammatory drugs that we take such as aspirin and ibuprofen while they are good for curing our headaches and stuff like that may actually reduce some good things like a fever, like a um, some swelling that we actually need in order to fight off uh, these, these things. Um, 
The next big thing that we need to talk about is the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system is a system that's designed to drain flu excess fluids from the body. And we'll talk about it when we talk about circulation, but basically all of your tissues are continuously having fluid leak into them from your blood system, and that's normal. What your lymphatic system does is collect all that fluid and bring it back up to the heart. But while it's collecting that fluid, that slow-moving fluid, it's checking it for stuff. Like if a, a, if a cell has a virus, it's going to release the virus into lymphatic fluid, and that's where we're going to see it first. If a cell is damaged or cancerous or anything else like that, it's all going to end up in the um, lymph, lymph system, much like stuff ends up in our sewer system. And this is a picture of an older gentleman with all of his lymphatic tissues, including the spleen and uh, all, his, all his other parts in here. So, interesting, huh? helps fight infections. So what we're going to look at is the way that our bodies um, um, can recognize a pathogen. And this is what we call our adaptive response. And so we have two cells that do that, what we call our B cells and our T cells. The B cells and T cells um, um, kind of reside in all the lymphatic organisms, uh, sorry, lymphatic organs of, of our body. And so here's showing just uh, the stem cells of the, what are going to become B cells or bone cells that, um, uh, 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 that uh, work in the bone marrow. And this is both the B cells and the T cells. And what these have on here are these receptors that look a lot like the antibodies that, that they produce. And they go via the blood to all around the body. And what they respond to are antigens. These are molecules on the surface of viruses or foreign cells, and they elicit an immune response for, from our lymphocytes. So an antigen is anything that you could kind of get allergic to. Um, B cells and T cells develop uh, these antigen receptors, but we also a lot of times call them antibodies. And these are the things that can bind to the antigen. So if your antigen is a shape, um, your B cell receptor is the complementary shape that fits on the cell. And once those fit together, kind of like the lock, lock and key, a lot like an enzyme, um, we will see we'll have some reaction. And so that is an antibody. This is a very important picture that I want to show you. So typically our antibody is this Y-shaped like structure. We have this antigen binding region. So again, when we were doing our ELISA test, we were, the binding was occurring at these sites. And the, anti, uh, the binding fits to a certain part of the antigen that we call an epitope. But it's a very tight binding. There's a number of different forces that give us that binding. And so this just basically shows you what an antibody looks like. We have the binding regions over here, and then we have this constant region over here. Um, and we'll talk about this. So antibodies are Y-shaped. Um, how we get these antibodies is by something that we call clonal selection. This is very important. Clonal selection is very important for you to know what that is. Basically what it is, is you are born, this shows only three, but you are born with over 10 to the 11th different B cells. It's amazing what the difference is. Trouble is there are so many of these and there's so many possibilities that it takes the body a while to find them. Once it does find one, this one cell that binds to an antibody then um, proliferates. It makes a whole bunch more of itself. So now instead of having one in 10 to the 11th, you now have thousands of these. You may have every other, uh, every other B cell that you have in your body may be this uh, particular one. You have lots of those. And uh, again, what happens is these produce antibodies and also these produce memory cells. So what we see is after an infection, you can produce lots of antibodies and these memory cells will live for the rest of your life, hopefully, because that way you won't get sick again. And so this graph here shows you a little bit of what's going on and I'll spend a little bit of time on this graph, but we're looking at antibody concentration here. So more antibodies means more resistance to a disease. This over here gives us basically time. So when you get first get exposed to a disease, somebody first coughs on you, it may take you up to seven days to actually find that particular B cell and start producing antibodies. It may take another seven days for you to produce enough of those B cells because B cells don't divide very rapidly. It takes a while for them to occur to produce enough B cells to produce a significant immune response. And you know what? After that, hopefully you get better, you don't need it, and then your antibodies will go down over time. After a couple of months, when you've lost all of these antibodies and those plasma cells are gone, you still have those memory cells. So when you get exposed to that memory cells, rather than you get the same response in a matter of hours rather than days, and in days you're going to get even more of a response from this, and that uh, tends to go a little bit lower. So what we see is that we have to have what's called a primary exposure and then a secondary exposure. The 
primary exposure is slow, your body is learning how to recognize the pathogen, the secondary exposure is significantly fast. And that's what we do with vaccination. In vaccination, basically, uh, we're taking a dead or non-pathogenic form of the pathogen that you would hopefully see in the wild, and we're teaching your body how to respond to it. Basically, it has to respond to it. And we've been actually really good. We've gotten rid of, for the most part, polio, mumps, and smallpox. Now, the trouble is with these diseases, we have to get rid of them all. If we don't get rid of them all, they could possibly come back. And so um, uh, it's really nice that we're trying to look at these. There are some immune disorders. Allergies are immune disorders where basically your body is responding to something that, you know, normally it doesn't need uh, to respond to that way. You don't need to, um, um, but the trouble is your body doesn't know. It recognizes these foreign things as an antigen, and you're trying all you can to get rid of it. But in terms of getting rid of it, you're kind of making yourself feel a, a bit sick. And so example here is you get exposed to pollen. These pollen grains are not going to grow inside of your body, but in certain times of the year, the pollen is all over here. The first time you get exposed to bladder, you produce a bunch of antibodies and memory cells. The second time you produce these things that are called um, 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 uh, mast cells or eosinophils, and they have a lot of histamine inside of them. Sorry about that. And what happens when you get exposed to this um, the pollen, it releases a lot of histamine and it causes swelling and aches and pains and fever and it's not really a good thing and so we don't like it. Anaphylactic shock is also the same um, thing. It's an allergic response where we release histamine over body all at once and basically the fluid goes from your blood to your tissues and you're probably not going to survive it unless you have one of these guys here, an, an EpiPen, so you may have uh, heard about those. Um, our immune system usually tracks non-self um, organs and gets rid of them, but sometimes it does attack your own tissue, and there are diseases such as lupus, lupus insulin-dependent di uh, diabetes, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis. Many different diseases are caused by our immune system. And, and again, this is just a, a picture and an x-ray showing somebody whose cartilage and their hands and their wrists have been damaged by their own immune system. Okay. Um, basically, that's it for today, and um, I, get, I didn't get a chance to talk about AIDS, but I will talk about it a little bit later. So uh, thank you very much.